A warm welcome to your Barbados Day evening Sunday is Wednesday, January 6th. British reality television star Zara Holland was this morning fined $12,000 for breaching coronavirus quarantine when she appeared at the District D Magistrates Court. Holland pleaded guilty to breaching COVID-19 Directive No. 4 by leaving Sugar Bay Hotel where she was staying pending the results of her COVID-19 test without a reasonable explanation. Our Fenella Wedderburn has the story. The British national was stopped at the Grandy Adams International Airport on December 29th, attempting to skip the island before her test results came through. Since then, her lawyers Andrew Pilgrim QC, Harry Husbands and Caviar Calendar told the court she had received two negative COVID-19 tests. Addressing the court, Pilgrim said Holland, who suffers from some form of anxiety, was extremely nervous about her status in Barbados and that of her partner, Elliot Love, and took what she accepts was a foolish step in trying to leave Barbados immediately. He said not only does she fully recognize the error of her ways in that regard, but is a person who has a great deal of respect for Barbados and its people. The Chief Magistrate, Ian Weeks, who described her action as grave, made it clear that COVID-19 protocol breaches would not be tolerated. She was fined $12,000 Barbadian dollars, which must be paid in seven days or an alternative of nine months in prison. She is currently on $20,000 bail. The judicial officer also made it clear that, contrary to public opinion, the court has just not jailed anyone, but has always done a means assessment as first priority in cases of wrongdoing according to COVID legislation to see how those persons could assist in purging their wrongdoings by way of a monetary method. He said where they cannot pay, the court would then look at any other options to make sure that persons understand the serious nature of the breach. Fernella Weatherburn for Barbados Today. In other news this Monday, authorities report that three cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed among staff of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Executive Director Juliet Bino sutherland however, says there is no evidence of person-to-person -person transmission as she promised total transparency on the state of affairs at the main public health facility. She made a disclosure while speaking on VOB's Down to Brass Tax earlier today. We've had one uh, emergency technician, two nurses from the medical intensive care unit, and one uh, a temporary or relief worker from the housekeeping department. So what we've been able to do is, is provide the necessary testing and screening for staff of those impacted departments, emergency uh, medical services that will be um, MICU here in the hospital and the housekeeping department, those investigations as to which shift or areas um, that person would have um, been involved with, we are including as well. Attorney General Dale Marshall says there's no major impact on the operations of the police force following today's closure of the Hastings Worthing Police Station. Early this morning, the station was closed for cleaning after one of the officers tested positive for COVID-19. Marshall told Barbados today all the officers who came into contact with the infected colleague are doing well. Those officers are currently quarantined at a hotel. Um, Based on the information that we have, their last contact with the particular officer would have been over five, over five days ago, and therefore, um, and I can say that that the results that have come back, um, numbering 35, those officers have all tested negative. Um, so we're very happy for that. Uh, the officer who's tested positive would obviously have been put into isolation. Um, as soon as that became known. In relation to the to the force generally, obviously anything that takes a number of our officers out of commission, even if for a short period of time, um, will have a negative effect on the force. It obviously means that individuals um, will have to carry more weight. Uh, but this is something that the force uh, has had to do from time to time. Certainly, when we first came to government in response to the um, to the skyrocketing rate of homicides, we had to ask officers to give up their off, give up one of their off days. So uh, it is the kind of of 
vocation that that officers understand that from time to time they will have to make sacrifices. We have contingency plans in place, um, but I'm very happy to be able to report that the the impact of of this particular issue uh, seems to be very small and very localized. He also disclosed that the cleaning of the station has been fully completed and is back in business. He also disclosed that the cleaning of the station has been fully completed and is back in business. The station was closed for about um, seven hours today. It was closed from this morning until um, until this afternoon around two o'clock for the purposes of of a deep cleaning exercise. That cleaning exercise um, was was successful, and um, and therefore the station of itself is now sanitized and and available for use as a as a police station. But the closure of it uh, was never a long term thing. It was always a short term exercise for the purpose of the cleaning. This is no different to what has happened with the Barbados Revenue Authority some months ago. It's no different to what's happening with various banks and other institutions where where they have a positive a person on staff who was tested positive. So this is not unusual. This is this is part of the protocol. There was heavy flooding in several communities across the island, which was under a flood warning for most of the day. Residents in Christchurch, particularly Watton, complained of rising waters. The Met Office said the inclement weather resulted from a trough system, which generated moderate to heavy showers. There's regional and international news after this short break. Original news in Jamaica, Mikhail Allen, the boy who was flown to New York for treatment after being attacked by dogs last November, has returned home. We have an update from Television Jamaica. Six-year-old Mikhail landed at the Sangster International Airport yesterday after undergoing several surgeries at the Montefiore Hospital in New York. His mother, Shireen Grindley, is happy to be home with her son. She expressed appreciation for the assistance she has received. Mikhail is alert. So all I can say, thanks to all who have done even a little dot in Mikhail's life, not even to mention the persons who have done a lot. So all I can say, thanks to, to every single whole who have prayed, even a word of encouragement. I'm just saying thank you, thank you, and to God be the glory, great things he has done. She says Mikhail is scheduled to do follow-ups at the Bustamante Hospital for Children within the next few weeks. So from there, he will follow on. I don't know what, what will be from there, but I got some paperwork to bring to Bustamante. So the surgeon said from there, I will know what is next. On the international front, all eyes are on the United States as hundreds of supporters of President Donald Trump stormed the U.S. Capitol today in a bid to overturn his election defeat. Congress was forced to postpone a session that would have certified President-elect Joe Biden's victory. Video showed protesters breaking windows and police deploying tear gas inside the building. Washington Metropolitan Police Chief Robert Conte said the rioters used chemical irritants to attack police. Several police were injured and one civilian was shot. President-elect Joe Biden condemned the action and challenged Trump to demand an end to the siege. An assault on those sacred of American undertakings, the doing of the people's business. Let me be very clear. The scenes of chaos at the Capitol do not reflect a true America, do not represent who we are. What we're seeing are a small number of extremists dedicated to lawlessness. This is not dissent. It's disorder. It's chaos. It borders on sedition. And it must end. 
now. I call on this mob to pull back and allow the work of democracy to go forward. You've heard me say before in different contexts, the words of a president matter, no matter how good or bad that president is. At their best, the words of a president can inspire. At their worst, they can incite. Therefore, I call on President Trump to go on national television now to fulfill his oath and defend the Constitution. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.